friends welcome back to my channel you might be able to see that I'm in my crafting space which I never film in here for some reason I have no idea why I don't but I'm gonna try to start filming in here more because it's actually really cute and I love the vibe of like craft supplies behind me since you know I am a crafting channel. Today I have a really exciting video, which is part of a larger series here on my channel known as DIYing Your DMs, which is basically where you guys DM me over on Instagram. And if you're not already following me on Instagram, make sure to follow me. It is Lone Fox Home. I'll put it on the screen somewhere for you guys. But I always ask you guys to DM over any project ideas, furniture you've seen, decor, inspo, whatever it might be that you're curious about and you wanna see how you can recreate in a DIY format. I try to then recreate it here on the channel for you guys. And I selected four really, really cute projects. I was looking through the DMs and I got multiples of a lot of these projects I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. So I figured if more than one person requested it, I might as well share it with you guys here on the channel. And before jumping into the project, I do want to mention that today's video is kindly sponsored by Honey. I absolutely love Honey. It is a free browser extension that basically saves you money. It is incredible. I've used it for years and years and years, and I'm very excited to share with you guys how that works in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and dive on into project number one. Our first project was sent in by Lone Fox family member Ama, I believe. I believe her username is 18ARD Noxella. I'm probably butchering all of that, but I will put it on the screen for you guys. And she basically said, Hi Drew, could you recreate these marble bookends? And I opened the photo. It is a marble bookend. It almost has like a tiered effect to it. And it is from West Elm. And these retail for about $70 a bookend, which is quite expensive. Um, but I do understand why marble is a very expensive, you know, substance to be working with. But I'm going to share with you guys how to recreate these bookends for literally a couple of dollars each. They look incredible. I cannot believe they turned out as well as they did. But let me share with you guys how I was able to dupe this bookend for just a couple of dollars. When I was brainstorming the supplies for this project, I figured why not use some scrap wood? So I ended up cutting down a old, I think like two by six down to the dimensions on the screen. And I ended up actually sanding it with a little bit of sandpaper as well once I had my cuts. are going to be applying contact paper on top and the smoother the surface the smoother the finish so this is the contact paper I'm going to be using here now I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys it is not my favorite contact paper and some of the ones on the screen here I will link below for you guys these are ones I've actually used in the past and I really really love these ones but I just don't have them on hand I did put them on order though so they are coming I just happen to have this kind of more chunkier marble but the thing I don't love about this marble contact paper is that the actual white portion of it is very blue and then all the veining is very warm so it's just like a very odd mixture of warm and cool which just to me kind of seems a little bit odd however it ends up turning out really really cute still i um, mean you could totally alter whatever contact paper you want to use with this project now as you could see here i just cut out a piece that would give me enough to wrap around the full cube one of the edges or i guess one of the sides does not need to be wrapped though because it's going to be glued onto another cube so i went around and wrapped this there truly is no great way for me to explain how i did this I kind of just wrapped it as you would a present but tried to keep all the edges as neat and as clean as possible so it looked like a chunk of marble as opposed to a marble paper wrapped block essentially so I also wrapped my other two blocks as well And we're already on the last step, you guys. It's super quick and easy. I just used hot glue and I used a very generous amount of it. And I also made sure to use firm pressure. That way there was no gaps in between our blocks once we connected them. I really wanted them to look actually connected and carved. So I applied all three blocks together and it does look super, super shiny on camera, you guys. But that's because of my lighting setup. It has lights from overhead, which just kind of glare off of this contact paper. I swear to you, when you see the final clips, it is stunning. Before jumping into our next project, I quickly wanted to take a moment to talk about today's video sponsor, Honey. Now, if you've never heard of Honey, you are truly missing out. It is a free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and automatically tests them when you are checking out on any of the supported websites, which there are over 30,000 supporting websites. And the install is actually extremely simple. All you have to do is go to joinhoney.com slash lonefox, click the orange button on the screen, and then download it on the next page. It takes literally three seconds to install, you guys. I swear, super simple and easy. And how it works is essentially whenever you are shopping on a website, 
website that is supported by Honey. Once you reach the checkout page, it'll actually pop up and allow you to apply any coupons it might have found on the internet, and you can watch the price drop from there. As you could see, I saved $103 on this world market order. I just wanted to share with you guys how simple it was for me to add a couple of items to my cart. However, with Honey, I saved an instant $103 I probably would have never saved prior, which is absolutely crazy. So make sure to head over to joinhoney.com slash loanfox to install Honey. It should 100% be on your computer. It is a no-brainer, and I just love this extension for saving money. But well, let's get back to the DIYs. We are going to our next project. This one was sent over by Melissa, and her username is Mecuella, I believe. And she said, so I've been seeing these moon garlands on Pinterest for a while now, and I thought they were so adorable. And I tried to DIY one, but I don't have any idea of where to start. Maybe you could give it a try. Now, I do think I've created a moon phase kind of garland in the past, but it was one that kind of attached to the wall and went downward. So it wasn't like an actual garland. It was more so just like a moon phase wall hanging decor piece, but this one's an actual garland and I wanted to do the chain and all the different elements. I believe that Urban Outfitters is the one that kind of popularized this item. It's super simple and it's also really fun to actually make. So let's go ahead and jump on into this one. If you guessed we're going to be starting off with clay again, you were 100% correct because clay, it's just, it's, I've just been loving using it lately, you guys. I don't know what it is, but I just love how I'm able to sculpt it into things. You can bake it, you can create shapes, you can do so much with clay. So I ended up rolling out about a quarter inch sheet of clay, and I'm going to just be using a cup from the kitchen to cut out some circle shapes here. And we're going to want a variety of different circles that cascade from a full moon down to a very thin kind of crescent moon shape. So what I did was I started off by cutting out a lot of different circle shapes with that cup and then I also tapped down the edges because mine kind of created an odd edge on there but how you can easily cut out an actual crescent moon shape is just to place your cup back on top of a cutout circle and just cut out like the inside of it to create this moon shape but you're also going to want to keep that inner cutout as well because I'm going to use that in my little moon face banner I also cut a full circle in half just to kind of create two half moons almost and then I cut out two more which I'm going to make a more chunkier crescent moon that way we have a cascade from this kind of chunk Chunky style down to a thinner one and then um, into a full moon shape. So what I'm going to be doing now is actually using a needle just to poke a hole at the top here. Just make it wide enough for a little bit of wire to go through after. Pop this on a baking sheet and just bake for about 15 to 20 minutes or as your clay's instructions tell you to do so. Once those cooled down, I use my metallic finish Rust-Oleum Bright Coat Spray Paint, which I will link this below for you guys because it is my new favorite gold. It is so bright, my camera lens or my camera settings can't even pick up the brightness. It was literally overexposing the entire time, but that's totally fine. That means it is nice, metallic, and shiny. They are so beautiful once they are fully dry. And I also picked up a little bit of gold chain at Joann's as well, and I'm going to be cutting this out. Now, it was kind of hard for me to share with you guys the lengths that I cut it out as, so I created this little diagram, which is going to pop up in about three or four seconds here to show you the different lengths that I ended up cutting out my chains at. So pause it here if you are creating this project. And now we're going to be doing a little bit of wire wrapping, which is a new technique that I'm going to share with you guys. So I'm putting my wire through my little clay piece there, and I'm going to be overlapping the wire so that they intersect kind of as shown here. And then I'm going to be twisting that wire just to twist it around itself about five or six times. So you have about a quarter inch of wire twisting. And then I'm going to be using a round nose plier or just anything that allows you to create a loop at the top with one of your wires there. As you can see, I have a loop up there. And what you're going to want to do prior is actually grab one of your chain pieces that you cut that coordinates to that clay shape. So whichever one that you're going for for that piece, you're going to want to slip the chain on prior, and then you're going to want to wrap around that base that you created. So just wrap that wire around about five or six more times back down to the bottom. That way it secures your chain onto the piece and you don't have to use like an oversized jump ring or anything. This just worked best for me. I've done wire wrapping in the past when I used to make jewelry, so it's very, very simple once you get the hang of it. And if you need to Google wire wrapping, you could probably find so many techniques that show it maybe a little bit better than I did, but I just wire wrapped all the pieces onto the chain. And then I did end up using jump rings to attach my chain pieces onto the longer piece, which is going to be the garland. So I used about a 60 inch section of chain for the actual garland portion. And then all of our cut pieces, which have our wire wrapped moons on them, are then going to be attached onto that chain and I spaced them three and a half inches apart. Um, that's just what I found worked best for me. And so I placed all of my little garland pieces on there with a jump ring by simply opening them. I also applied a jump ring to the start and end and that finishes off your garland.
We are now approaching the project that took me so long to create. I'm going to be completely open and honest with you guys. This project took me about five or six hours to do, and it wasn't that it was a hard project. More so, it was a very time-consuming project. And this project was sent over by Apostle Rostov, and basically he said, I would love a DIY on this light fixture made out of dowels and raffia or cane. It's from H&M Home, and it costs around $150, I believe. And I looked at it. I couldn't actually find it on the H&M Home website. However, I did find a photo of it on Google, and I did see that it was $150. It looks very, very complex, and I was like, you know what? This seems like a fun challenge to do, and I'm going to share with you guys my take on this light, but do keep in mind, it's a very time-consuming and almost like advanced project, so I do want to let you guys know that it was not the easiest thing I've ever done, but it definitely is achievable if you do want to spend the time and just, you know, dedicate some hours to creating it. You totally can, and I am obsessed, absolutely obsessed with the outcome, so let me share with you guys how I did this one. The base of our light is actually going to be constructed from embroidery hoops. So I have two that are 12 inches and I have two that are seven inches. We're also going to be using some quarter inch wooden dowels and I'm going to be introducing some eighth of an inch wooden dowels later on as well. But for now, let's focus on our larger rings. So I popped out the insides of both of the embroidery hoops because those are seamless rings. And then I'm also going to be using this raffia paper cording. I got this at Target a year ago or so. And when you see paper cording, do not let that scare you. It's actually extremely, extremely strong. It's almost like a ribbon or a cording. So what I did was I started off by tying on one of my wooden dowels to the uh, side of my embroidery hoop. This is the 12 inch one that I'm working on here. And what I'm going to be doing is actually securing and fastening down every single wooden dowel around the entire exterior of this embroidery hoop, just by kind of crossing it over the top of the dowel, going underneath the embroidery hoop, and then creating an X on top, just securing it in place. And in no way is this going to be super, super strong, bondly secured because we're just kind of pulling it with a cord around it, but do not worry guys We're going to fix that in just a little bit But you are going to do a very repetitive process and just kind of secure your dowels around the entire Exterior of this piece and I did not space them out in any particular way I just tried to make the spacing pretty similar throughout and once I reached the opposite side I tied a double knot and this is what we were left with So that's the start of our light and at this point I was a little bit skeptical I was like is this even gonna work? So I continued on with the process of what was in my head and I took the second embroidery hoop and I attached it to the bottom side of all the dowels and I actually hot glued all of these ones down and just with a little dot of hot glue again the Gorilla hot glue holds it so nicely and I just spaced them out as evenly as possible around the entire embroidery hoop and once I reached the end and I glued everything down I went back with my raffia cording and I went ahead and created the same exact X shape over the top of all of the dowels and the embroidery hoop that I did in the first section just to create a very cohesive finish on both the top and the bottom. So about an hour and a half later, I was finally done constructing this kind of base section here, but to me, it just did not look full enough. It looked very sparse and just not very like grand in a sense, you know, it didn't look like the photo to me. So I actually went in with some eighth of an inch wooden dowels and I applied them and glued them in between every single of the quarter inch wooden dowels that we used originally. So I glued down an eighth of an inch wooden dowel on both the left and the right side. And this really filled it in and just honestly made it look so much cuter. And it is time to repeat everything we just did, but on a smaller section, which I guess is nice because it goes by a little bit quicker, but you do have to cut your dowels down. They were originally 12 inches, but I wanted this one to be much smaller than the first one. So I cut them in half to six inches. Now, as you can see here, when you cut them with a pair of scissors like that, it creates this little pointed edge. So I used a little bit of sandpaper to sand that down and create a nice clean finish. And basically everything from now on is going to be the same exact steps as what we did previously by starting off by just wrapping your raffia cord around your dowels and securing them on the embroidery hoop to start. The reason that I'm actually doing this is because it allows me to maneuver them later and make sure that everything is nice and straight and symmetrical because if I glue them down to start, there's a possibility that one might be crooked or one might kind of like lean in a different direction and I wouldn't be able to fix that very easily. But if I have the cording on there, it gives me enough time to move it in the proper spot and then glue it down so it's super, super secure. So once that's all done, I went ahead and I 
applied my eighth of an inch wooden dowels like I did with the last one just to make it nice and full. And then what we're going to do is actually construct the light. So we have our two different shades we already made and right down the center, I'm going to be applying a 12 inch long dowel. This is the thicker one of the two. And then I'm also going to be using my paper cording to just really fasten down both edges to make sure it's nicely secured. Now, what I did was I kind of just went in and out and wove this around just as many times as possible until I ran out of the cording, honestly. And what you're going to do to really, really secure this down is actually saturate the paper cording in crazy glue. And guys, this literally turns into cement once you do this. So I did the same exact step on my smaller ring as well. And once that was fully done and dried, I placed my smaller shade on top of the larger one in a crisscross orientation. So as you can see, the bars that run down the center are crisscrossed. And I'm going to be using my paper cording just to secure that down, doing about 10 to 15 wraparounds to attach it. And then using my crazy glue, saturating the paper cord, it will literally turn into cement once that is fully done. You're just going to install your light cord down the center and that finishes off your light. And that, guys, concludes today's episode of DIYing Your DMs. I hope that you enjoyed these projects. They were a lot of fun for me to create, and I love the outcome of honestly all of them. I do think, though, the lamp's probably my favorite, and then, you know, the bookend was really cute, too. I actually really like all the projects in today's video, and I would love to know which one you like the best, so definitely leave a comment letting me know which project you liked, and also, if you could, just give this video a thumbs up. It helps out my channel so, so much, so if you did enjoy it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for brand new home decor and DIY content every every single week. And quickly before letting you guys go, I do want to remind you to definitely download the Honey extension. All you have to do is go to joinhoney.com slash lonefox and make sure to use that link. That way they know that I sent you guys. But whenever you are shopping, it will pop up in your little shopping cart, ask you to apply some coupons. You do that and you could save some money. It's truly a no brainer. I absolutely love Honey and I've used it for years. So it's kind of surreal that they reached out for a partnership, which is very exciting. But I will catch you all in my next video. Again, if you ever have any DIY projects you are curious about, please feel free to DM them to me over on Instagram. I would love to help you guys out and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye everyone.